Hello everyone and welcome to <laughs> This is Asia, and here's Nepal. Now let's have a look, shall we? Decorating the top of the world like the icing on a cake stands the country of Nepal, a land firmly situated in the towering midst of the tallest mountains on earth. Woven beneath these colossal Himalayan peaks are the verdant valleys where Nepal's first inhabitants settled long ago. These ancient Nepalese were likely migrants from the great Indus Valley civilization, but Nepal would see many, many other settlers make the country their home, including tibeto burman speakers from the east, and today there are scores of ethnic groups, none of them comprising a majority. Not much is known about Nepal in those faraway times, though it is referred to here and there in ancient Indian texts. The Kirat people, for instance, are mentioned in the Hindu epic, the Mahabharata. During the Iron Age, small kingdoms popped up in southern Nepal, and in one of these kingdoms, located in the country's present-day province of Lumbini, was born a man from a noble family called Siddhartha Gautam. One day, so the story goes, he left his comfortable home to have a look at the world outside, and was horrified by the suffering and the misery that he saw. He abandoned his wealth and possessions, and went off to live as a wandering beggar, and sought instruction from holy men. Dissatisfied with the teachings he received, he sat himself in meditation beneath a fig tree, and resolved not to get up until he gained spiritual awakening. The man who sat there was awoken, and became, as we know him, the Buddha. He went out and taught what he learned, and as the centuries passed, his teachings spread through much of Asia, from Afghanistan to Japan, and today Buddhism is the fourth largest religion in the world, with more than half a billion followers. By the 200s BC, southern Nepal was under Indian rule, and was visited by the great king Ashok, a devout Buddhist. More Indian rule followed, and then more Indian rule followed, then the Takuri people had a go. Then the Khas, whose influence on the country includes their language, which spread and is today the official tongue, spoken by over 40% of citizens. From the 1200s, Nepal came under the rule of the Malla dynasty, who reigned for several centuries. Under Jayastri Malla, laws were codified and Hinduism was popularized. In the 1700s, the Gurkha kingdom in central Nepal launched its campaign of expansion under Pirtui Narain Saha, who, along with his successors, brought the entire country under their rule, which became the Kingdom of Nepal. In 1788, the Nepalese invaded Tibet, which was currently a possession of Qing Dynasty China. The Nepalese and their Gurkha warriors were victorious and forced the Tibetans to pay annual tribute to them, but China wasn't happy and invaded Nepal. The fight was a lot tougher than anticipated but in the end China prevailed, and Nepal agreed to pay tribute to them. In 1814, a border dispute between Nepal and the British led to another war, and though Nepal fought bravely and scored some battlefield wins, the British came out on top, and Nepal was compelled to relinquish lands they'd conquered. Nevertheless, the British were very impressed by the Gurkha soldiers, and, eager to have them as allies, supported the creation of a Gurkha regiment to serve in the British army, a regiment that still exists. After a troublesome time of plots and bloodshed, a new regime took power power in Nepal, which proved rather unpopular with the people. Democracy was introduced after the 1951 revolution, but it didn't last long, for in 1960 the king decided to rule the country his way. <coughs> Dictatorship. <coughs> this lasted until 1990, when revolution forced democracy's return. And then, in 1996, the Nepalese Communist Party decided to get rid of the royals altogether, and there was a terrible 10-year civil war, in which thousands died, and which resulted in the end of the royal government. The king and queen were shot to death by their own son in their palace in 2001. Nepal in the years that followed made good progress in modernizing and reducing poverty, and the country today with a medium level of human development has a growing economy and tourist sector, many visitors hoping to scale Mount Everest, which is where I am right now. So that's it for Nepal, and that's all from me for now. Bye bye <laughs>